Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you might start getting onto the Star Wars analogies even as soon as the next question. Big Zam! <laughs> oh boy. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> oh, we're at, we're at the Battle of Solomon. Okay, so after uh, White Base leaves Jabro, that's when they uh, the Earth Federation starts pushing their uh, military might into space and pushing the, Z the Zeon family back. Or the Zeon forces back because everyone's getting fucked up. Uh, it turns out that while White Base was acting as an actual fucking decoy, no exaggeration, uh, what, uh, Earth Federation was actually completing plans on a new, uh, newer models for uh, gyms because at that point their centerpiece was fucking gun cannon and gun tank. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're gonna get far with those. Yeah, yeah you're gonna do well. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, let's see. What, what should I use? I want to. I forgot this was in the game. Fuck. Yep. You know what? Okay. For Bailey. <laughs> One of my two patrons for like a year now. Fuck it. We'll do it. <sighs> okay, so this map does a really, really shit job of showing you what everything is. So. Good luck fighting a mobile armor with a melee focus suit. There should be two. It has a surprisingly good uh, range attack, funny enough. But this will be interesting. It also has. It has hello. Uh, I hate everything you stand for and everything you would go on to ruin. I hate it. I hate everything she would inadvertently bring upon the world with Shar and Amaro. Fuck Shar's counterattack and fuck Unicorn especially. Lala herself is okay in my eyes. It's the, it's the fallout that really sucks. But anyway, yeah, I like brown girls. Sorry. <laughs> because the show was rushed, and we only introduced her, like, three episodes before she died. Essentially. <laughs> Granted, this is a very funny exchange, because this is the very first time that Shara and Amuro do actually meet face-to-face. -face. <laughs> you have very pretty eyes. You're one of Taki, you have beautiful eyes. <sighs> okay, so here's the thing. Lala... Lala may well have become a mother to me. Weird. She's younger than you. Considering the love triangle. And she is deep fried. Yeah. Is that like them to capture? Probably not. Uh, not as bad, but still kind of bad. <laughs> Buffalo wings. Okay, so it's, it's with Lala that we're introducing a, a new concept into yes. the show. First of all, pay attention. Uh, look, look at her robe. Uh, this is a very trademark thing of like mysterious magical woman in the late 70s for anime. It's all over the place with fucking uh, star blazers, and it's also a thing here, where magical, long flowing robes make you seem magical. Yeah, that sounds like sci-fi. Yep. So Lala is the first documented, sure uh, documented, I guess. Yeah. The first open new type that we know of, <laughs> because she's exhibited uh, psychic powers forever now, essentially. You make that sound like a sexual orientation. The first openly new type character. <laughs> I mean, in terms of like, uh, fr from Van Dyne's narrative to us, the viewer. I but mean, it is a funny idea. I mean, if, if... No, I get it. It makes perfect sense. She's an icon. She, uh, she would pave the way for people being able to identify as Gundams. God damn it. <laughs> She helped Setsuna come out. Is that what you're saying? Yes. God damn it. As a hero. Ah, uh, great. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Lala is the very first person with, with, uh, to demonstrate new type powers, essentially. Shars had them for a little bit, but it's not like big or anything. He's just a naturally good pilot. Amuro has been developing them, but he doesn't quite have them yet. In truth, we've been talking about new types since like Matilda, actually. Not think about it. Yeah, Matilda was the first one to mention that Earth Federation has been uh, observing something called new types. It's like, what? Okay. New types is, as a concept is something that I also hate because it never, ever, ever, ever advances nope. at all in never... Universal Century. And you'd think by the year 150, maybe, that they would be, take it, uh, that they would be taken much more seriously, that they would be seen as... Maybe a protected class, maybe as the superior race or whatever. But no, they've basically all but fallen off the face of the earth. Yeah. It's considered a miracle when it's discovered that Uso is one. 
that that's he's how they're going to win the war with the Zanskare Empire. Okay, Here, so because he's the only one in the whole show. I, he's he's one of two. I love the idea of new types because it is okay. Seventy nine is literally like two years released after Star Wars Episode Four. Yes. Star Wars Episode Four, for those who don't know, revolutionized the sci-fi genre like completely and utterly. It was the biggest goddamn thing on the earth back in the eighties. And the actors thought it was gonna flop. They did. That's why George Lucas went small and he got actors nobody knew about. Also, just because he likes showcasing new talent. Anyway, Slugger, Slugger, good boy. Um, helps me, helps Mirai uh, get some. Yay. Anyway, um, Star Wars. I I love the idea of new types because it is essentially just the Force, but like not. There's um, no midichlorians that we were shown. Anyway. It's like, I like the idea because it's, it's essentially like taking the idea of human evolution and ramping up to 11 because like, yeah, when you take humans and put them into like isolated boxes and make them fight each other in mechs, like, there's, like, you could have, you could pitch the idea that like, they have like new sensory abilities when, when in space. That's a cool idea. But here, here's the thing. My issue is Time traveling mechs. Thank you, narrative. And unicorn. And unicorn. Before they got, f before it went completely off the fucking rails. Before new they, types were cool. Before they got all, before they got all, drive people to uh, to jump off a bridge with it. It's like the it's like the idea is cool, I guess. But the only thing they ever displayed anyone doing with that power, outside of combat, was telepathy. <clears throat> and that's that's cool. Telepathy, is, future sight. Smaller stuff. Really, it seemed like they were gonna do the most of it with Lala before she uh, uh, eats shit in like this mission. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Now is the time. Ah, uh, burning item. Burning item is good to use in this game. Yes. So uh, it like it seemed like what Lala like they were gonna have the most to do, and it seemed like it was gonna be re going a really cool direction. But like we said before, Tomino is a chaotic creature, and um, very frequently doesn't follow his own themes to a T. So <laughs> it very frequently goes off the deep end, and shit gets really, really weird. Um, he's nowhere near Toriyama bad, but sometimes it does feel like he's forgetting uh, that he uh, that he created certain plots at all. And they just fall by the wayside sometimes. Yeah, essentially. Um, I feel like its idea did peak with uh, cyber new types, because like forcing humans to become that point. Um, the whole idea with with uh, be modified. Unfortunately, with uh, cyber uh, new types, we're going down the path of my understanding more so than like actual combat prowess. That's the whole crux of it, and it's debatable if that was a good idea. But oh, God, you can do that. God damn. Yep. I summoned my sigil. But unfortunately, it kind of goes off the deep end very quickly. That's why I think, personally, that 8th MS team has, like, one of the best stories in the entirety of the series, because there's no... No new types. There's no new type bullshit. Like, there's just straight up no new, new type bullshit. I think new types are a great idea when it's not the central focus, it's more so, like, on the human-to-human -human struggle. That's why the greatest protagonist in the entire franchise is... Oh, fuck. Jiro? No, uh, no. He's good too, but no. Is... Oh my fucking god. Give me a series. I can probably help you out. Give me a series. X. Oh, fuck. Uh... I, I know who you're talking about. He He's, um... <sighs> it's a weird name. It's, come, it's like on the tip of my tongue. Fuck. Give me a sec. Okay, he's Googling. Uh, not Google Maps. Not, not quite. I feel like it's, a, it's definitely two syllable word. I know that. And anyway, while he's uh, venturing into that, I want to briefly talk about actual some of the gameplay things for Gundam because we've gotten this far into it. I haven't talked about the gameplay that's over. Very Garrett. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was Garrett. Fucking Garrett ah. is uh, the greatest protagonist in the history of the franchise because he's not a new type. And not because the concept doesn't exist or there's not a replacement. Gundam X has new types in it, and it's weird because it's the only non-UC show to explicitly use the term, <laughs> to explicitly use uh, the new type terminology. Uh, you're going to want to get out of the way. I'm out, I am out of the way. 
And he is uh, not only not a new type, he is decidedly not a new type. He is friends and boyfriends with people who are her new types. It is deliberately because he isn't that makes him so much better. He can understand people without needing uh, super brain powers to be able to do it. He wants to understand people of his own volition, and he's also a really good pilot of his own volition. He wasn't born or destined to be uh, to be the greatest pilot in the world or to be the greatest communicator in the world. He did that all on his own. That is a very good argument. Uh, after having marathon the fuck out of uh, Zayden last week, I feel like Camille is probably the best new type protagonist that I've seen so far. <laughs> that might sound weird. Might sound hella weird, but honestly, no, he's, no, he's really good. He's honestly, like best. he's a new type, but with a purpose because it's meant to counteract the the evil machinations of the Titans with uh, human rights violations with the cyber new types and human experimentation. And uh, in terms of UC, yes, he's definitely one of the best. Yes. Um, it feels like he does it the best, and it doesn't go overboard with uh, the crazy bullshit that he can do. Like, a de summoning a psychic shield that can block glass fire? Sure, whatever, that's fine. Who did that again? Uh, he did. He did it oh. against uh, Yazan. Right. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Um, and then the whole thing against Sirocco and, like, having, like, almost Jedi-like battles, I think that was kind of cool. Like, it doesn't go... It feels like it's still naturally paced and progressive. It, it's not too bad. Then things go... Bucky with uh, Cyber uh, Char's counterattack and warping an entire goddamn space colony from one location to another with absolutely no explanation Did about you, what the ultimate fates of Char or Amaro were. Do you know who the strongest new type is? By Tomino's own word. By Tomino's own word. That's a that's an interesting question. Um, I'm going to guess Banana. No. Good. All right, I don't know who. Judo, Judo really? Ashita, by Tomino's own word, is the is the most powerful new type of all. He was so powerful, he was able to summon a new type stand ghost. Oh yeah, that's right. You did show me that. <laughs> that managed to. F okay, I'm not gonna get into that, but it managed to make Haman feel some very terrified feelings that made her remember things. Hmm, PTSD. Great. Yeah, and uh, he's also definitely one of the most effective in combat. Even when he's piloting a decidedly weaker suit, he uh, he still generally has the upper hand most of the time. That's dope. There's a whole other... Wait, there's an incomplete section of this level. What the hell are we about to do? Get kicked out, maybe? Oh, there you're going down the bottom. He's here! So I'm not too worried because Burning Finger does a crap ton of damage. And I've had enough experience with fighting mobile armors that's not the worst thing in the world for me anymore. Wow, there's a lot spawning in, actually. Okay. Meet Best Dad. Best Dad Dozel. By the way, Ocean Dub forever for him. Fuck the California dub to give him. The modern one? The modern one. Neil Kaplan. I love Neil Kaplan to bits. I absolutely do. It's more the direction. Dozel sounds amazing when he's actually made to sound like a, a wise, like, gentleman versus... Um, uh, big gorilla beefy man that, uh, Neil Kaplan's voice unfortunately, uh, lends him to sound like. He does get better about that over time, especially in later episodes of Origin, like 5 and 6, where you actually see him talking to his wife. That's talking, good, that's really good. Talking to his daughter, being the most mature person in the room, when, uh, when having a, uh, a, str a strategy meeting between a couple of generals and Giren. Yeah. And he's the first one that outright says, you know that if we continue with what we're doing, we'll be designated as war criminals, right? And everyone <laughs> else... stop them! And everyone else does the... Mm. About that. <laughs> That's really good. And, like, I know for a fact Neil Kaplan can do a very, very good sophisticated voice because just look at everything fucking Madara, seriously. Yep. Like, despite my grievances with Madara as a character, Neil Kaplan blow knocks out of the fucking park with him. Dancing. Keep dancing for me. Yup. Boom. Uh, okay, so general things about fighting mobile armors. Oh, oh. Okay, before <laughs> that, one more thing. Dozo's also a fucking probably the smartest dude that and military strategist that's actually with the, and Neo Zeon. Neo Zeon. Is it again? Zeon. Yes. Zeon. Because he knows that it's much better to fight with numbers versus a giant fuck off mech. Oh, wow, that's cool. 
Well, Ramba too, but Ramba's under his service. So. Yeah. Um. R really, like, I love this whole this whole thing because like it goes to show that yeah, no, there's a lot of actual d good human beings that are inside of, of um inside of Zeon. It's not just Giren who is Hitler 2.0. Does really good. I that's one of the things I love about fucking early UC. There's so much moral gray area, and it also furry affirms that yes, war is hell. Oh my god, I killed him, <laughs> and you were worried. <laughs> fucking damn. Okay, remind me to never knock off or give shit to the burning gun. Oh my god. I don't. Th I didn't think he was bad at all. I just didn't. Th I just didn't think bad he matchup. Had, I just didn't think he had any projectile weapons. You don't really use projectile weapons against like, these things, honestly, because remember. Uh, the big Zam has that anti beam rifle uh, stuff. <laughs> Grand Saga Law does take it out uh, via my manly sacrifice, but still. Rip Slugger. R Rip Slugger. Oh, the, the most <laughs> Chad shit ever! God, I Dozel is just the best. Oh my god, I forgot we showed this. My Space Ghosts! No, this is just really Amro's new type house kicking in. <sighs> he's seeing the monster. He, he's seeing the bravery and uh, spiritual strength of Dozel as he's going out. That's pretty much what's being like portrayed there. <sighs> Baller shit. <laughs> and again, when you show it as not the central focus, crystals that can warp across time, it's generally pretty good. <sighs> I'll never get over that. You shouldn't. It's stupid. <laughs> God, I don't know how a uh, narrative didn't kill Gundam for me forever. Yeah, right. Especially considering before I get before I picked up uh, Double Zeta again after I took the break, I did watch a couple of the uh, the Trinity OVAs and some of the movies in between to try to amp myself up again. One of those being narrative. I don't uh, know. I don't know how that didn't set me off forever. Nero is unfortunately, since it's the highest, it's the most recent point in the released UC timeline for us right now. Oh wait, is this it? Do you know who Hitler is? Is this actually the scene? Oh, it's not. The, it's yes. not as it was in the original. I think this is just a different it's redrawn. But yeah. yeah, redrawn. Okay. There's something about this. I, yeah, I know it's stupid, but that does. Oh yeah, you mean from the me. Middle Ages? Yes, because. The Universal Century starts in the year uh, 2045 AD. Yep. Which means at 0079, uh, it would be the year 2044, I think. Mm hmm. Or uh, uh, 2022 or something, uh, give or take. That would have been less than 200 years ago. That's something like who Hitler is would absolutely have been taught in schools very recently, especially if in, in American oh, schools. Oh, be careful. Being... You're actually using the big example for this one. Especially if in American schools you're still being taught you to, all the time about things like uh, the, uh, the Civil War and the Revolutionary War and crap beforehand, the Boston Massacre, what have you. If you're still being taught about those 300 years later or 200 years later, you absolutely will, are going to be learning about Hitler in schools until the year 3000. <laughs> 